Thanks very much, Ash uh, Kankorla, and uh, thank you, Minister, for being here to hear this debate. Um, some of your colleagues don't always uh, stay to listen, uh, and it's, 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 it's refreshing that you are here. Um, when I was appointed Minister for Enterprise uh, back in 2011, there was 1.8 million people at work. Today, we are 2.7 million. We have a 50% larger economy in terms of the number of people at work. Uh, that is an extraordinary change uh, in our ec economy and society. And we're planning now for a much larger economy uh, with much greater infrastructural needs. And I was taken by you know, the comment by Leo Radker stepping down uh, in the last couple of days when he said, you know, if, if there was regrets he had, it was that he wasn't bolder uh, in taking some uh, making some decisions are, you know, acting when, you know, more cautious advice was being tendered to him. Uh, and I think the penny hasn't fully dropped with all of us, that our economy is now so dramatically bigger. We're catering to a much larger population, much larger set of economic demands, social demands than we have been uh, planning for. And, uh, you know, I remember your own department back in 2011 thinking 50,000 was the sort of uh, jobs growth we would experience over a five-year period. Uh, and we now have nearly a million extra people at work uh, over a 12-year period. Uh, that conceptual change is something that I think um, we need to get to grip with. Um, equally, you know, I welcome this future uh, very much welcome this future fund. Um, but the backdrop to ageing that, you know, increasingly hear debated is not recognising that the fact that we're living 20 years longer is a fantastic achievement. It is a fantastic opportunity. It's bringing, you know, unheard of potential benefits that we can exploit, not just to people of a certain age who are experiencing that today, but to the whole society. Uh, and we shouldn't be talking about this as a burden and a time bomb. This is an opportunity. And you know, we can build social capital from a growing population that is living longer, living healthily, being able to do uh, remarkable things. But we haven't, in my view, adequately structured our thinking or the institutional framework that we think of it in those terms and we, uh, we set about uh, delivering the potential that's out there. I cited to you at parliamentary question a few examples like, you know, the fact that you know, we, are, we don't have suitable accommodation to, to, relative to, to people who are older. Most of us are living in accommodation far beyond our needs, but we don't have the chance or the incentives to right size. 50% of us would like to work beyond the retirement age, but we don't get the option to do it. So, you know, worrying about the dependency ratio when we uh, trap a lot of people who want to work longer uh, in, in, in options that could close that off to them, you know, that, that is counterproductive. And I'm sorry that the name of this commission, which is coming up, is not a commission on positive ageing, but is a commission on care for older people. That is a part of the reality, but only a very small part. And you know, I think we need to think differently. We are working in an economy that's at absolutely full capacity, uh, and that is a real constraint. Uh, and our constraints at the moment are not primarily financial. They are uh, real constraints of the capacity to build this infrastructure. We don't have the staff. And I think, Minister, you need to turn your attention to how are we going to build that capacity to build critical infrastructure. I think we need to think a bit outside the box. How are we going to get the, those who are building offices, and we're building loads of offices, to switch to building other things that we need, housing and so on? Are we going to you know, take a different view to FDI? We have a very good base in IDA for getting in uh, foreign direct investment, but we need FDI in the capacity to build critical infrastructures. We need to upskill the construction sector, which is predominantly too small in scale, not uh, building to the sort of standards that we need. Uh, we need to, and we are doing, streamline planning. But I think we need, Minister, 
for the state to be willing to de-risk some of the investments that need to be made. What would be wrong with the state saying we will underwrite by saying we will buy 50% of the homes that a particular development is going to develop and give the certainty that, you know, what is it now? I think it's 70,000 planning uh, applications are out there who have permission but are not starting. We need to think about how we, we, we shift that. We are planning also against a really dangerous uh, time in, in geopolitics, as, as they call it, and at a time of transformative change, as, as uh, this previous speaker, Deputy Whitmore, was saying. We need to accelerate climate action and climate adaptation. And uh, you know, this is a really welcome journey. And the state is taking on its shoulders to you know, create a plan led with the state investing the infrastructure for this fantastic offshore uh, energy resource that we have. So we will need those resources that the Minister is setting aside and we need a very effective plan to bring it on board. But I'd also appeal, Minister, you need to think about carbon farming and it's good to see that the Minister for Agriculture is there be beside you because without both leadership in the design of carbon farming and funding of carbon farming, we will find it extremely difficult for farmers to successfully undertake the transformation that they need to take. And they don't have the confidence at the moment. And you can hear that daily. We need to, to, to invest in that design and potential funding and leadership. And the final thing I, I, I'd say is you, we do need sectoral circular economies. And in the context of your planning uh, as Minister of Finance, Green procurement is not delivering uh, the level of shift in the way we do things that's needed. We don't have, for example, timber being embodied into more and more uh, public projects. By contrast, I was recently had the good fortune to be in Paris to hear how they are planning for uh, the Olympic Games. They are taking a really radical approach. There will be no plastic inside the Olympic uh, Stadium. You bring your own container and there will be fountains to, to refill. Every element of that construction will be moved on and they already have the plan for where the different elements of construction will be redeployed after the Olympic Games is over. That's real green procurement and we don't see the shadows uh, here yet. Sorry, thanks. Go, go